one. Our lesson plan is the life cycle of a butterfly. I'm Terry. And I'm Shelby. And I'm going to introduce our NSES and our TEKS and objective. Right, our NSES is content standard C, which is life science for kindergarten through fourth grade. All students should develop an understanding of life cycles of organisms. And our TEKS was science first grade and it was organisms and environments. The student knows that organisms resemble their parents and have structures and processes that help them survive with their environments. The student is expected to observe and record life cycles of animals such as a chicken, a fish, or a frog. And we also did an English language arts and reading TEKS. And they are able to listen. This is the listening and speaking TEKS. Students use comprehension skills to listen attentively to others in formal and informal settings. Students continue to apply earlier standards within greater complexity. Students are expected to listen attentively to speakers and ask relevant questions to clarify information. And next we're going to go over the objectives that we chose for the lesson plan. The students will identify and describe the stages of the butterfly life cycle and the students will research three different types of butterflies from two various areas of the world. This is our diversity part of our lesson plan, bringing in the different cultures and types of butterflies within those. And now Ms. Terry is going to introduce our lesson. Okay. Can someone describe for me a caterpillar? Ooh, ooh. Shelby. It's a bug. Okay. Uh, can you describe for me a butterfly? Um, is it a bug too? It's it's a pretty bug. Though. It is. It is. So we're going to read *The Very Hungry Caterpillar* by Eric Carl Carlisle. He also illustrated the book *The Very Hungry Caterpillar*. And also, by the way, this book was dedicated to his sister, Christina. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up, and pop out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. The end. So, what happened to the caterpillar after he spent all day eating? He got a stomach ache and he got big and fat. He got big and fat. Yes, he did. Why do you feel that it was important for him to continue to eat all day long? Um, so he could make that house that he slept in? Which was called the? 
Do anybody remember what this house was called? Cocoon. Cocoon. Great job, Shelby. I'm going to give you a dojo point for that. So now in our lesson plan, we would go over the stages of the butterfly with the class. So, oh, did you want to you wanna hit while I talk about it? technical difficulty. Go to the duplicate. So if whereas we were going through a lesson plan, we would go through each stage to let the students know what each stage was. So stage one is the egg stage. And the egg, with the egg stage, the butterfly lays the eggs on the leaves, and which is the female butterfly, of course, and she attaches the eggs to the leaves or stems, and she always makes sure that the leaves where she lays her eggs are near food that the caterpillar wolf would eat. Our next stage is the larva stage. The larva is actually the caterpillars that are worm-like, uh, worm-like stage, and they sometimes have the stripes, black, uh, yellow, and then what they're doing is spinning into a cocoon as they grow. Um, once they wrap themselves, it is called a chrys chrysalis. Uh, normally with the, the chrysalis is called the transformation stage where they transform into the caterpillar into a butterfly. Um, Normally in this stage is where they um, get most of their food substance and they eat. After they have for a couple of weeks and then they will turn into what is the adult stage, which is the butterfly. Uh, the butterfly will break through the, the chrysalis, the cocoon, and then um, a liquid which is, it drains to their wings, which makes their wings wet, and then they fly off and the sun helps dry the wings. And there you go with the life cycle of the butterfly. And this stage will continue. The, the butterflies will again lay the eggs that will go through the um, larva stage and then the pupa stage and so forth. So the cycle is continuous. And then while Terry was talking about the pictures, the students have seat work. They are identifying the puzzle. While they're doing a puzzle. Doing each stage, they can look at the puzzle that they've been given and they're able to see and match each stage as she's talking. So this would be the egg and then the larva and then the chrysalis and then the adult. So they're able to do a hands-on activity while she's showing the pictures and giving them the description of the life cycle. And you would probably want to uh, have them into maybe groups of um, two or four. Preferably two because the, we have another activity where students, it needs to be two in a group. So I would probably do groups of two so each student will be able to uh, work the puzzle and also work the, the acti activity so it's hands-on experience for them to learn the stages. And then the, we have a short video that we would uh, show the students that would just be a follow-up to incorporate the book that we have read um, for them to learn more about the life cycle of the butterfly. And one of the questions we had for them was, can you tell me how a caterpillar changes from a... DreamWorks Dragons 2 has more fun, more dragons, and more...
Professor Popplepot. And I'm Ned. Yes. And we're out in the garden today, learning about nature. Yeah, yeah. Professor Popplepot has told me he's going to teach me all about nature. Mm, yes, that's right. And we've just seen a butterfly fly by. Yes, yes, so yeah. pretty. Hey, Professor Popplepot. What? I was wondering, mm -hmm. how come I've never seen a baby butterfly? Ah, well, you see, that's because there are no baby butterflies. But, but what? There must be baby butterflies. Well, there are in a way. Let me explain. Okay, explain. Okay, so, a butterfly starts its life as yeah. an egg. Yeah, okay. Sitting okay. on a leaf. Oh, that's nice. Yes. yes. Now, when the egg hatches, yes. you know what comes out. A little tiny baby butterfly. No, 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 no. What? A caterpillar. But a caterpillar? Yes. But that's a completely different beast. No, it's actually the same animal, just in a different shape. Whoa! So how does it become a butterfly? Does it like grow wings and then it flies off? No. You see, what happens is the caterpillar is what we call the larva stage of the animal. Larva? What? Like in a volcano when it erupts? No, 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 no. It's a different kind of larva and it's oh. spelt differently. Spelt L A R V A. Oh, larva. Yes. Oh. Then what happens is a hard shell forms around the caterpillar and it turns into a chrysalis. Oh, a chrysalis. Yes. Now, inside the chrysalis, yeah. it continues to grow okay. and it forms its wings and its antenna. And when it comes out of the chrysalis, it is a butterfly. Yes. Wow. So it's like magic. It goes into a, a, a chrysalis, like a little room that covers it, and then it turns into a butterfly yes. and comes out and it can fly! Yes, that's exactly right. Wow, that's amazing! Nature is so amazing! It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Wow. Oh, look, there's another butterfly flying past. Oh, wow! You know what I want to do? I want to go and find a caterpillar and take a picture of it and then take a picture of a butterfly and see if I can tell the spot the, the, the similarities. <laughs> that's a beautiful idea. Thank you. Come on, let's go and have a look. Okay, let's go. Come on. Well, we'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, so after the students have watched the video, we could ask them a question. Um, uh, can someone tell me one um, stage of the life cycle of a butterfly? And then you can write it on the board and just go through all four stages until they have completed it. And once we go through that, after we've you know had a little short discussion, we would do another activity where we're using the sequencing strips. And with this, the students could, um, that's why I was saying keep it in groups of two, because you would have a streak for each student. Uh, they would be given the, um, the butter, can you fix that show? There we go. The, the, the sequencing strip, and then they would have pieces that they could cut out and they could color to add. So what you would do with, you would have this wheel, and what you would do on the wheel is put a little paper clip and in your group, you would have them spin the paper clip with a pencil and whatever number it lands on, that's the number that they have to put the pictures that they have. So say they spent it on and it landed on one, they should have the picture of the egg on the leaf. And this will help check for uh, understanding of what we've just learned about the life cycle of the butterfly. And each person in the group would take turns. So that's, it should be two people. So after the first person, then the next person goes until they get completed. And that's uh, something that they could also, once they get finished, we're going to put this one in our science journals yes. too. This will go into their science journals um, after they have completed it. And they could also write a brief sentence underneath explaining the stages and why that it activity helps them and what they learn about each stage and that could be a comprehension check also assessment for the teacher um, and the assessment piece that we chose would be a life cycle wheel and this has to do with where the students would cut out each of the pieces of the stages and they have to glue them in correct sequence so that when they were to spin their wheel, it shows each stage of the caterpillar's life cycle. Like there's the caterpillar, and there's the eggs. 
So this is just another reference for them to help them remember. And then after they finished, they would paste this in their science journal with a list of what the stages are, like the first stage, the second stage, third stage. And we are able to assess by making sure that they correctly labeled and glued their pieces on their wheel and then labeled in their science journal. And then at the end of the lesson, we could ask the students, um, um, can you tell me the importance of each stage um, as a higher level type thinking for, for students? Um, and get, after you get a couple of answers, then you would be through with the lesson plan. And that is it. And I just wanted to touch a little bit more on our objectives. Our objectives, the multicultural part. We would allow the students 10 to 15 minutes to go onto the computer with teacher approved websites, of course, and pick out three different types of butterflies that come from two different type, uh, various countries of the world just to incorporate that diversity. And maybe we might have some ELL students that come from a different country that can actually give their first hand knowledge and accounts of butterflies. So, and that concludes our lesson plan. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you.